that's gonna help kind of seal up some of that one good line across the top. You're gonna see we're getting a scoop right at the stern and then sweep it forward. I'm gonna come behind him and just try to. And you can see we screwed the heck out of those and I've uh, got some big massive valves. There you go. Y'all see how it's catching a lot of that dust. That's our inch and a half um, cockpit drain. Look at that everybody. We got the rod holders all fiberglass. So welcome back to the channel. Last time you saw us, we had just stuck down those rod holders. They had no fiberglass on them. What we got now is uh, two layers of mat and then uh, we've bonded those in a little bit with some high strength filler on top and bottom. And you see their fiberglass, we roughly sanded those and then we're in the process of fairing the sides out. We got my brother, we got Marky Mark. Marky Mark in the house. Mark, you wanna show them what you're doing down there? We're uh, kind of fairing in these corners, detail sanding. Those are gonna be for our gaffs and hook holes and rod holders. And we've got a whole series of them. We've also gotten all of this fared shaped. You can see where there's raw fiberglass sticking through, but all this is gonna be is filler. That's gonna produce a nice semi-smooth first finish. We're not trying to go like yacht caliber in this boat. It's still going to be like work boat, but it's going to be much smoother than what you would see just in a, uh, like our Kenner, for example, we're not doing the splatter finish like we would do on it. But, uh, we also have this first, first section of gunnel has been installed. You can see our brackets up underneath there and we've used a high strength filler and we've screwed down through this. And in about every six inches, we've screwed down through the Kusa and then the seam here, and then we'll come back and fiberglass all of that. But we have been making a bunch of dust using an assortment of sanding tools. There's no one specific tool, but we are using a lot of electric stuff. So we're another big step. We're fixing to glue down one of the gunnel pieces. We've got it staged right here with all the screws already installed. We got twos and two and a halves. We've got our 3M Marine High Strength already. Pretty nice big batch there. We're gonna be mixing that up and it's gonna be puttied on these gusset slash rod holders that we've been working on for the last few days. So that's fixing to go in. I'm gonna get my cameraman here to hold for us and we're fixing to get this thing Put together now generally speaking y'all when you're mixing this putty about one swath across the top is usually going to be plenty we're going to mix this real thoroughly matter of fact i'm going to take off a little bit of that y'all see there i went a little hot it's okay if you put too much in discard it because it is pretty warm today it is definitely feeling like springtime. Now y'all have seen me mix putty before, I imagine, but if you have not, I generally like to kind of do a scoop and turn, scoop and turn, and we're looking for a nice, smooth, homogenous color. You want it mixed thoroughly, but you don't want to mix too long because as soon as you put the catalyst to it, it starts, it starts getting ready to activate. Limited time here, so we're gonna go really fast or as fast as I can go. Just get a bead down this edge. We're gonna get some on everything, and then we'll come back and we'll all right. There's our mark for eight feet. Some on the top of each of those. butter up the ends of this one. One piece is gonna meet the next and we wanna help bond. All right, back down. 
All right, so now y'all got a little bit on everything. Now at least I know I've got enough to make it, so I'm gonna come back here and add a little more. It's shocking. We were just talking about how much it takes. You would never think that you would use a batch of putty that big. We want some squeeze out, but we don't want to waste it either. All right, gentlemen, Mark, does that look good to you? Good. All right. We've already kind of measured and checked and lined up. And got our little gauge here that's gonna keep it nice and level. We've got all of our screw holes pre-drilled so we kind of know where everything should go. I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple in. Yep. That drill is the bomb. That's the top ticket right there. So you can see, guys, we got squeeze out pretty much everywhere, which is what we want. I'm gonna tool that. Squeeze the excess. You're gonna have a little extra left over. I've got a pan full of resin and it is red hot. Do y'all see how red it is? And what we're doing is we're going and we're putting a second primer coat on our piece of insulation. So we've already done one coat. We're gonna do another. That's gonna help kind of seal up some of that porosity and it's gonna give something really good for our putty to bond to. Important step if you're ever bonding any kind of core or putties or like with the Kusa, always important to make sure your core is really dry and clean and then you're going to want to put a coat of resin as a primer sometimes you can even do two coats it doesn't necessarily have to be just crazy heavy on the first one a lot of times we'll do one modest coat and then a second modest coat We're gonna make sure we got it all the way around the edges. If something's gonna let go, it's usually around the edges where to let go first. And y'all can see all these little holes that we drilled in here and we actually drilled them at an angle. And what allow, that allows is when we stick the putty, this into the putty, it will allow air to go through those vent holes. And you can also see the putty squeezing out and it lets us know that we've got a good, a good bond. We've got our big batch of putty. We've got our activator, our BPO catalyst. And generally, as a rule of thumb, one good line across the top under warm weather is going to be adequate. And we've got our foam staged and ready. Yeah. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to install this all down this side here. Y'all have probably seen me mix this up before, but I've got a big board here with plenty of room. And you kind of just want to lift it and turn it 
lift it and turn it until you don't have any swirls of blue you can get away with a light catalyst mix as long as it's got some catalyst if you get a blob of material that does not have catalyst in it that little blob will not want to cure all right so what we're doing is we're just turning that from the bottom y'all see how i'm picking it up moving it one way then the other way just kind of turning it over on itself you want to mix thoroughly but you don't want to mix it too long because as soon as the catalyst is in it it is going to start the curing process so all right that ought to be good i'm going to start getting this on this boat in bulk right now i'm just going to get some material from back to front i'll start at the bottom because gravity is my friend in this department y'all can see we're getting a scoop right to stern and then sweep it forward right to stern sweep it forward clean that up a little bit maybe one more little pass across the top and we'll do the same deal deal we know how far we need to go start at the top work our way down we're gonna have probably some left over that's okay i got another area that needs needs some filler be sure to get some in the edges and on the bottom Look at there, that was pretty close, guys. Look how much was left on the board. Logan, I'm gonna use my notch trial. I'm gonna pick some up and move it around. We're gonna have some excess, but this helps level it. I'll take that excess off the board. Do that again. You want enough, but you don't want it super heavy because it'll hold it'll hold it up off the surface what do you think marky mark ready. mark says she's a go, go all go. right y'all i'm gonna just sock it down in there all right mark hit it start behind me I'll start behind me if you don't mind I want to knock it in there what we've done y'all is we have a mark has pre-cut some pieces that will give a give us a little pressure I'm gonna come behind him and just try to Give it a little bump here and there to help it work the air out. Make contact. That fit up front here? Yeah. Probably right in there. Clean up the excess there so we don't have a big mess. Gotta work fast. This kind of stuff, it does not wait around. Okay, so crew, the putty has set. It's nice and hard. Kind of dried everything off with the heat gun a little bit and I've mixed up another really hot batch of resin and we are gonna resin coat this foam just get a nice heavy coat and what we've got are a bunch of holes the vent holes and by using a, a roller and a heavy coat of resin we can kind of run the resin up to these vent holes and then fill them as we come from the bottom to the top 
And what that does is that kind of fills up those holes and the uh, resin can run if there's any voids behind the, uh, the panel as we stuck it in, the resin can theoretically run through those holes and then help bond. It also kind of creates these little pillars, pillars of resin that run all the way through the core. And so it gives you better adhesion. You can see we're just squishing up. Logan, can you show them that when you zoom in? Do you see how there's a, there's a big ridge of resin that runs on top of the roller? And as you get to each hole, you kind of pause there and let it, let it roll in there. That may be a little bit overkill. I'm sure it probably is. This whole boat is built to that standard. But that really seals that foam up. Helps that resin go down in there. It's an important step. You always, again, I'm going to go back. You always want to resin coat any kind of core material prior to lamination. You can see, zoom in there right there, Logan. Show them that big O on top. You can see there's that big old ridge of resin. And we'll come back and we'll clean that up a little bit. Once it's all on there, it's been about an hour since we put the putty on, just to kind of give y'all a timeline. So I'm gonna clean up that resin a little bit. I pick up the excess, work it back and forth, work it in. It's really important to kind of go one direction, then another direction. That kind of helps work the resin into the pores on that core. This core is going to be submerged, you know, this tank, once this compartment is finished, this will be holding water and ice and fish. And we do want this core to be thoroughly sealed. So there again, you can see, you can see that ridge of resin. And I'll pause again slightly as I get to each hole there and let a little bit of resin run in. Kind of satisfying to see that happen. And again, when I drilled these holes, I dilled, drilled them downward at about a 45 degree angle so that the resin can kind of run down into the hole rather than just straight through the panel. That's kind of one of those little things that I think it helps the resin move through the core a little better. This is similar, pretty similar to how you would do most cores and other applications. Sometimes if we're mounting this core on a flat panel and we've got gravity, y'all always notice, notice I've got a bunch of bricks. Always, these are standard, just construction bricks. These are really good for using for weight. And sometimes you can just place them between the vent holes there as the core is drying. And then once the core has dried, you would remove those and do the same deal. You would roll the resin down into the core. I think that's looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna move to the other side. Y'all, I'm pretty much gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna let this resin set. And we'll be ready to put a couple coats of chop strand mat over it when we're all done. Looks nice, doesn't it? We got two coats of mat, one coat of resin on the foam, the half inch core that's going in the side for insulation. And we got some glass over the filler that we put in to radius all these corners. We tried to create some flow down toward the drain. You can see there's a little recess down there. Trying to make it so that when we're washing out the fish box back there, water's inclined to go toward the drain rather than just meander around. And then you guys had seen we had been fairing down the sides. We got all of our rod holders pretty much fared in. We're working on the gunnel pieces. And then yesterday, we're working on the combing for up front. So there's going to be a little lip or an edge that if water does dip over the bow, it kind of helps shed it around the boat. That'll also beef up these edges here, give them a little more strength. And uh, just gives you a little more when you're when your leg is bumped up against the gunnel there, we got a little more vertical height to give you a little more 
to push against. But wanted to show you guys, we're using one layer of three quarter and one layer of half. I've already got the pieces cut out and I got them resin coated. But one important thing to remember is that we are staggering the joints. So anytime you're doing two joints of Kusa, you can see the joint for the three quarter is offset. And then for the half inch layer, it's offset the other way. And then this layer of half staggers over that. So you don't have seams landing in the same place. And kind of doing the same thing over here. These are our pieces for our verticals. And you can see we've kind of keyed this out and then keyed that out. And that will mate up into that just like so. And then we're going to be screwing down through the top till the... Uh, bonding agent we're going to use some of the high strength and we're going to use some resin to bond that then we'll come back with a router and trim those edges real nice and wrap that in fiberglass Ooh, that coleman is awesome y'all we uh yesterday i was cutting those strips of kusa and was uh, able to come back and we bonded those with resin uh the forwardmost bit of the combing i use some of the uh the pro strand to bond it but these longer pieces, um, I went ahead and just used resin. And you can see we screwed the heck out of those. And you can see I talked about staggering these pieces. And then I kind of keyed that piece in. And then two screws to the top. And what I did is I screwed this first layer, first layer on. And brushed a coat of resin behind it. And then I had screwed the second layer on through the top and then once they were both in i had come through the sides and i had already pilot hold and pre-drilled all this stuff so you guys know i'm a big fan of what i call a dry fit like go ahead and make sure everything fits run all the pilot holes and then that way once you've resin coated or glued it those self-tapping screws will find their home and and everything will line back up and then you can see here we're getting ready like when we do the next pieces the next piece will kind of key key in there there'll be an overlap a stagger in the joint and then the next piece will run on the outside so i have not or we've postponed movement forward on the next bit of combing because i have not installed that bit back here yet because we're still working on the rear deck but what we've decided to do today y'all it's kind of windy it's kind of rainy it's not really a great fiberglass day and uh, we've got to get the through hole fittings in this boat before we can move forward with the rear deck because it's a lot easier to get access. And you can see we've been in here. We've got some circles marked and we had some templates and I've uh, got some big massive valves. That's actually the valve, shut off valve for our scupper drain. So we're going to have some drains right here. They're going to route right down there. Got another big through hole fitting. Got some, uh, those are going to be our intakes but I want to show you guys what we're doing on the back end of the boat. Now, this is kind of one of those things where you want to measure measure twice and cut once. Um, so we've been spending the afternoon kind of mocking all this stuff up. And we're just using little a little tiny, tiny drill bit to make little test holes. Pilot hole. You pilot hole. We've actually drilled a couple different holes. And then we can go on the inside and lay all this stuff out. But we got to have... A big fitting here for our drains and then these are going to be our intakes for our live wells it's gonna be a drain for our middle live well and um it's been it's been kind of a chore y'all but what we did i thought this was kind of cool we made a pattern this is kind of a mock-up of like the inside of the bilge area so i'll show you guys we kind of had that in there and we were actually able to put the pumps and through holes kind of through through there and mock all this stuff up and get an idea of where we wanted things before we started drilling holes in my boat. <laughs> I hate to drill holes if you're not sure what you're doing. So it's been kind of tedious. It's one of those deals you want to measure twice and cut once and drill a small hole first and do it on one side and be sure that everything looks right. But that's kind of exciting because we got hardware going in, which means we're approaching the end of fiberglass and we're moving into fitting the boat out with hardware. All right, y'all, so what we got, we've got the through holes coming through the back of the boat and you can see we've already got our big, that's our inch and a half um, 
cockpit drain, and then these are going to be the inlets. Those are three quarter inch uh, bronze. You want to be super sure that you use bronze instead of brass. Never want to use brass below the waterline. Bronze is what you're going to want to use. But you can see we've got a lot of marks here. We've kind of test fit everything on the inside. We like them, and so we've duplicated these marks. So we got nice symmetry. You can see we got a mark there, mark there, and a mark there. And uh, I've got a mark. I've got a mark there. Another mark. <laughs> yep, my brother, Marky Mark. He's helping me again today. We're down here in the shop. So y'all haven't seen me really drill any holes in this boat. I'm fixing to drill a two-inch hole in my seven-year project boat. Mark is going to hold the camera. We're going to do some vacuuming, and I want to show you all the process. We're going to use a pilot hole and a big hole saw, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. There you go, Marky Mark. Now I'm going to plug in. Go ahead and get the vacuum cleaner going. Mark, come here and show him. Y'all, we got a big, rigid shop vac over there, and that is one of the best things that you can possibly have for in the shop. All right, here we go. We'll plug that thing in. Come on over here, Mark. You want to hold, hold the camera. Mark's going to be cameraman today. And what I'm going to use is a small, that's probably about a 1 8 inch or less. And we're just going to use a little tiny pilot hole bit. Just real gently, real easy. Make sure we're on the mark. We're good to go. That vacuum is catching all that dust. Can you see? good all right so now what we're doing y'all we're going to be switching over to the big that's a two inch hole saw it's a little bit on the big side but look at the size of the valve that's an inch and a half valve that's going to be going on the inside of the boat and it's a pretty big fitting so a two inch is what you're going to want to use so now that we got our small small pilot hole there we got this bigger drill bit and that kind of helps everything center up Mark, can you hold the camera and hold the vacuum at the same time? Think you got it? Yeah. Double check. Want to be sure you're going in square to the boat. a little closer there you go y'all see how it's catching a lot of that dust good right up tight just take our time you don't want to force it All right, I'm gonna show y'all how thick. All right, bring that vacuum back over there, Mark. We'll catch all that. We'll catch all that dust. That is, that stuff is no bueno, no good. Look at this, guys. That back of that boat is as thick as my finger that's the cutout that's pretty cool zoom in there all right you also that using the um the vacuum has been a big trick if you're not using a vacuum when you're sawing or cutting fiberglass especially in confined spaces that's how a lot of times we get away with not wearing a mask either we've got air moving i'm gonna go ahead and unplug her there mark the only bad thing about a vacuum is the noise. Uh, it'll kind of it'll kind of wear on you. But there we are, y'all. So we got several holes in. We got one big one drilled there. I believe she is going to be mega tough. Thank you, Mark, for your help, man. All right, y'all. Right, um, 
hate to leave y'all hanging, but I think this is probably going to be the end of this episode. Um, still got gunnels to work on. We're going to be doing that. We got some fiberglass work, working on these through hole fittings and pumps. I'm going to post more of that stuff, but y'all are going to have to catch that on the next episode. Remember, if you're enjoying the content, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, share, comment. If you got any friends or buddies that like this kind of stuff. And as always, it's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters. My brother, Marky Mark. And as always, we will catch you guys next time out.